Hey, it's Joanne Musa, the Tax Lean Lady. We are live on Facebook. This is Ask the Tax Lean Lady Live, where you can ask me your questions about investing in tax liens and tax deeds, and um, I do my best to answer them. <laughs> All right. So just let me know, uh, say hello when you come on, and let me know where you're coming in from. So what state? so that I can better answer your questions about tax lien and tax deed investing because uh, it is totally different <laughs> in every state. Um, even uh, tax liens and redeemable deed states are different. Uh, you know, even uh, there are a few states, they all might do redeemable deeds, but each one might do them in a different way. And the same with tax liens, the states that have tax lien sales, um, each state does it differently. They all have, and as a matter of fact, well, they all have different state laws, right? But as a matter of fact, even in one state, different counties can do things different and different cities and municipalities can do things differently. So, um, so let me know where you're from when you come on and, uh, and let me know what your questions are and I'll help you the best I can. Hi, Enrique. How are you today? I know it's morning where you are. It's afternoon here. It's two o'clock in the afternoon here <laughs> on the West Coast. I mean, on the East Coast, but I might be coming to the West Coast um, in the future. So. Uh, I will keep you posted about that. Hi, Carlos from Kentucky. Oh, okay. Um, good to have you on. We don't get too many people from Kentucky, so it's great to have you on. Uh, Kentucky is a lean state. They do it differently than other lean states. Okay. Um, so let me know, guys, what are your questions? What can I help you with today? Uh, today is tax is ask the tax lien lady live and when I can answer your questions live here on my Facebook uh, business page. Okay, um, now tomorrow night we have a wealth building webinar with uh, Carl Fisher of Cama Plan. Cama Plan is an IRA custodian. It's a custodian that I have uh, one of my IRA accounts with. So if that is something that you've been thinking about, a self-directed IRA, or maybe you have a self-directed IRA and you want to know, well, how do you use your self-directed IRA to invest in real estate or tax liens? then um, tune in tomorrow night. It's at 7.30 Eastern time for you guys on the West Coast. It's 4.30 um, Pacific time. And um, I'm not sure what time zone you're in, Carlos, in Kentucky, but uh, um, you could figure it out compared to Eastern time. It is 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. It is, it is uh, free to come to the live call. If you want the replay, it's part of our wealth building webinar series, which is $49 a month to join. And you get all the replays of all the calls that we've done in the past. Um, and Nicole has put the link in the comments for you to register for tomorrow night. Again, it's free to register and come to the live call that we're doing tomorrow night with Carl Fisher of Cama Plan. So um, would love to have you guys there. We already have over 100 people registered and we can only have 100 on the call. So get there on time uh, to, to make sure you get your seat on that webinar. All right, so what questions do you guys have for me today? Uh, hi, Maxine. And Shamika and Jennifer, hello, hello, hello. Candice, okay, Maxine Merchant is the name that is uh, coming through from Facebook, but it's Candice, Shamika, and Jennifer. Hello, and how are you today? And where, more importantly, what state are you in? <laughs> if you have any questions for me, the only way I can answer them correctly is to know what state you're talking about. So let me know where you are from. And uh, it looks like we have 10 people on today. So that's including my assistant, Nicole. So nine, nine people on. So I know you guys have questions. Don't be shy. Ask your questions. 
Um, oh, hi, Jason. From Phoenix, Arizona. Now, Arizona just got done with their tax lien sales, as you know, if you're in Phoenix. Um, and hello, Christine. Good to see you again. Hello, hello, my friend, Christine. Um, and are you still in PA, Christine? I guess this time of year, you wish you went to Puerto Rico. <laughs> my, my, um, and that's an inside joke, guys. Uh, Christine used to work for a company that went to Puerto Rico and she decided to stay here. Uh, my son just got back from Puerto Rico and actually I'm going to be going in July when it's going to be hot as hell. I'd rather go right now. Um, I'm going to a real estate mastermind uh, that is going to be in Puerto Rico and there are uh, major tax advantages if you have, have a business um, to move it to Puerto Rico, by the way. And hi, Paul. Uh, yes, I do have clients in Canada. Um, but I'm not sure how you're taxed because you might be taxed twice, both by the US and by Canada. I am not sure how that works. Uh, I had a client in Canada who bought properties in Michigan, um, but I don't know how the tax it. You gotta talk to your CPA about that. Okay, your CPA is the person. I'm not a tax professional. Sorry, Paul. Okay. Oh, Christine was at the Jersey Shore. Uh, yeah, it's a little cold yet for the Jersey Shore. Uh, yeah, it is cold. My sister lives down in Tom's River, and I've got a cousin that lives in Shark River, um, both near the ocean. Uh, let's see. Jason just bought several tax liens this year. Cool. At the tax sales that just got done. Um, did you get them at the Maricopa sale? And you have a question about subsequent taxes. Is it best to buy subsequent taxes while the lien is outstanding? Um, and, and let me know if it was in Maricopa, Jason, because it's different in Maricopa. Yeah, in Maricopa. Um, Maricopa does the subsequent taxes differently. When you, first of all, um, Arizona nickel and dimes you for everything. So when you pay subs, you're gonna pay $5 just for the uh, ability to pay the subsequent taxes. Um, but when you do them in, in, actually Maricopa might charge you more money because they're gonna actually issue you another tax lien certificate for your subs. So they might charge you $10 to pay them instead of five. <laughs> You'll have to check with them. And is it good to pay them or not? Um, it depends. What did you get? What interest rate did you get on your uh, uh, on your liens that you bought? Um, it depends on what you got because you only get you only get the interest that you bid on your subsequent taxes in Arizona. So it depends on on um, what you get. And hi, Tom, how are you? Um, Tom is from New Jersey. And hi, Peter, good to see you again. The judicial sale in Allentown is tomorrow. <laughs> Tried to register, but because of COVID, they said it was too late. Yeah, a lot of sales, like I'm here in Monroe County, and uh, you have to register now a day before the sale. You cannot register the day of. You used to be able to register the morning of, not anymore. Um, so, and some of the tax sales now for PA are online, believe it or not. Um, hey, Gary. Ah, Gary's from Monterey, California. Okay, so we've got a couple people on the West Coast. Um, and and if and if you include Arizona to be on the West Coast, we've got three people from the West Coast. Jason, you got one to five percent on your. Okay, so here's the question: You're only going to get on your subs what you bid. Do you want to pay the subs? So it's up to you. Do you want to pay the subs and keep control of the property, but you're only going to get one to five percent? And you're probably going to pay check 
with the county, check with the county treasurer and see what you have to pay in order to pay the subs, what they're going to charge you that you're not going to get interest on. Is it going to be $5 or is it going to be $10? And how big were those liens? If they're, you know, how, how big are the taxes that you get to pay? And, and you only have a specific time to pay them, I think, in Arizona. If you don't pay them on time, then, then you lose your option to pay them. So check with the county treasurer, and then you'll know whether it's worth it or not to pay them. The other thing you have to find out in Arizona is in your county, um, which is Maricopa, uh, it seems like they allow more than one lien per, um, per property which means there is real no clear priority of liens. So if there are any other prior liens or any subsequent liens to yours and somebody else forecloses, um, you can still have a right to the property. But if you foreclose, then somebody else that has another lien can also have a right to the property. Like there's no clear priority of liens in, in some counties in Arizona. So, um, uh, so the other thing, and it's it's really depends on the on the deal. It depends on the lien. If it's something that you think won't redeem, then I would pay the subsequent taxes to keep your interest in the property, you know, so that nobody else gets to buy a subsequent lien on the property. Uh, but if you think it's going to redeem, then I would not pay them, especially if you only got one percent. Why bother? And you might even lose money on it, right? Especially if you have to pay $10 to pay it. If you got 5%, it depends on the amount of the taxes that you get to pay. All right, did that answer your question, Jason? Um, okay, and Tom has a question. In Georgia, after redemption period, can you file foreclosure? Can you then file for eviction? How can you prevent any damage they may do to the property? Well, you can't. <laughs> you can't until you have them evicted. And yes, after the redemption period is over, yes, you could file for foreclosure. You do need an attorney. And after that, you can do the eviction. You will also want to do a quiet title uh, process um, if you're going to turn it around and sell it. You'll need to quiet the title in order to get title insurance. Things to watch out for in Georgia, homeowner's fees. They will stay on there. Be careful of homeowner's fees in Georgia. Uh, any government liens will stay on there. Municipal liens. Okay, so you'll have to cover those also. Um, all right, Jason says the average is 2K June to December pay. All right, that's a pretty good deal then. Especially if you get in 5%, I would go ahead and pay it. And especially if you think it's not going to redeem. If you think it's going to redeem, then I, I might not bother. But I would, if you're getting 5% and you've got a, um, a lien or taxes that you could pay that's over 2K, yeah, I would pay it. Um, Kin Tzu, I don't know if I'm, Kin Tzu, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but hello, welcome, glad you're here. And if your screen froze, did anybody else's screen freeze? Close out other things on your computer if your screen freezes, because my screen didn't freeze. But I am not on Facebook. I'm on stream. I'm doing this on StreamYard, so I'm not seeing what's going on on Facebook. But Nicole is my assistant. Nicole is. Um, oh, and hi, Maxine. Okay, Maxine came in as Jennifer, <laughs> and Jennifer came in earlier as Maxine. <laughs> All right, and where are you from, guys? Jennifer and Maxine, where are you from? Um, okay, Christine says we're not, wasn't frozen, so that's on your end. Uh, um, okay, 
Yeah, everybody's saying it's okay, no freezing. So um, if you are having that problem, close out everything else on your screen uh, because if you've got a lot of windows open, that makes it, um, that uses up more bandwidth. Okay, you guys are in Georgia, great. Okay. And hi, Peter, good to see you. Um, I don't know if I said, I forget if I said hi to you earlier or not. All right, guys. Uh, did that, Jason, did I answer your question? And do we have any other questions? Okay. Tom has another question. Um, a USDA foreclosure, do secondary liens get wiped out? What do you mean by a USDA foreclosure? I don't know what that means. Is it a tax foreclosure? That's those are the only foreclosures that I'm really familiar with are tax foreclosures. Um, a USDA foreclosure. Um, don't know what that is. Okay, so enlighten me. What's a USDA foreclosure? Oh, it's a bank, a bank foreclosure. Uh, most likely because they're USDA loan properties. Um, it's a bank foreclosure. So in a bank foreclosure, do secondary liens get wiped out? It depends on what they are. Like if you have like a primary mortgage and a secondary mortgage and the primary mortgage is doing the foreclosure, then the secondary mortgage gets wiped out. But if the secondary mortgage is doing for the foreclosure, the primary mortgage doesn't get wiped out. So, but I'm not, that is not my area of expertise, guys. You got to talk to a real estate expert or an attorney, a real estate attorney about that. I know about the tax foreclosures. Yeah, and Christine, I think he was talking about mortgage companies because he's talking about a USDA loan property. I don't know. I, I've never heard of USDA before. Is that a bank? Because, um, you know, HUD properties are federal loans. Uh, so, and that would be different. It wouldn't be a USDA loan. Okay. Oh, U.S. Department of Agriculture. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea what happens with that. Sorry, I, I just don't have the expertise to answer that question, so I'm not gonna guess. <laughs> Talk to an attorney. Um, all right, Gary says, hi Gary, on tax lien list from Arizona, they have a parcel number, uh, E plus 09, how do I find a property address? Um, you would go to the assessor's webpage and on the tax county tax assessor's webpage, there should be a portal where you could put in the property ID number and find the address of the property. You might need the owner's name to do that. Um, some counties do want you to look up under the owner's name, but you should be able to use the parcel number to do that. Um, I use with my students uh, something called tax sale finders, which shows us the properties that are on the list. Now the Arizona tax sales are done, they're over. I do not do over the counter stuff. That is not what I do. I like to go to the sale because anything left over after the sale is chunk because the tax sales are so competitive. Sometimes does something good get left over once in a while, but it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. So you better know what you're doing and trying to look up each property on the county assessor's webpage is the real time intensive way to do it. Um, I use something called tax sale finders that I give my students access to. And that's what we're using right now. That's what we used when I did the Arizona, I had a training on the Arizona tax sales when they were going on. Um, and we use tax sale finders. And now that's what I'm using right now. I'm doing a training for the Indiana tax sales, the Indiana commissioner sales that are going on now. Um, 
you can register. There were nine online sales. One of them is over. And the eight, there's eight more that you could still register for right now. Um, registration ends in a couple of days for one of them for Lake County, but Lake County, you must register in person. The sale is online, but you have to register in person with a deposit. It's the only one that you need a deposit and it's a $600 deposit. $100 of that is not returned to the investor. If you don't buy anything, you don't get $100 back. That's your fee. Um, but the others do not require a deposit or a fee. And I'm doing a training on that over the next few weeks because these sales will be going on over the next few weeks. Um, and Nicole, you could put a link to that training. If you just go to taxleanlady.com forward slash Indiana, you could find out more about that training. Um, okay, let's see, we have some more questions. Uh, where to check if this property has an IRS lien, such as state Tennessee. Okay, the state is Tennessee. Um, where to check if the property has an IRS lien. Sometimes they will let you know that in the tax sale and sometimes they won't. Um, I usually don't worry about that for tax liens. Tennessee is a tax lien state. I don't worry about the IRS liens. If I'm going to a deed sale, I would check the county records, uh, county recorder um, for any liens filed or judgments filed on the property. Yeah, Jennifer, it's called tax sale finders. I make that available to my students. Um, when they're doing a course with me, they get a 30 day trial to my tax lien profits accelerator, which is my membership. And I include tax sale finders. Um, Yeah, and thanks. Tom just responded to Gary's uh, question about the um, the ID, the parcel ID number. And yeah, that's an Excel thing that it said it has number one E plus O nine. If you just expand the column, you'll see the whole number, and then you could use that in the tax assessors. Um, page to look up the, the property information. And Nicole has put the link in for the Indiana uh, Commissioner Sales Training. But if you just go to taxleanlady.com forward slash Indiana, it'll bring up that page. All right. Any other questions? I'm going to take a sip of water. And um, and Tom was asking, do they give loans? Oh, I guess he was talking about the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Um, And it sounds like there's a crying dog outside my door. So I'm sorry if you guys hear my dog crying. Is any Texas county have, okay. I think what you mean is does, do any Texas counties have online auctions? Can you give several online auction websites? Um, Texas has the capability of doing online auctions. They have the laws that allow it. But right now, there's only, I think, five counties that do, and they're smaller counties with not much available. Offhand, I don't know which counties they are, and I don't know the platforms that they use because they don't use any of the well-established platforms. Um, some of them have their own. 
So I'm sorry that I don't really have the answer to that question for you, except that I know that um, that there are last checked, there were five counties. Uh, one of my friends is the expert in Texas, and he knows about all that, and that's Arnie Abramson. I've done a workshop with him. Members get access to all the workshops for free, so that is in the members area, the um, Texas tax sale workshop. I've also done a webinar with him. So if you have access to the wealth building webinars, and by the way, Nicole, you could put a link in there. Uh, you could put the link in again to register for tomorrow night's wealth building webinar with Carl Fisher of Cama Plan. The um, Cama Plan is again is an IRA custodian. We're going to talk about how to use your self-directed IRA to invest in real estate and tax liens. Uh, but if you're a member of the um, wealth building webinars, it, anybody can come free to the webinar, but to get the recording, you have to be a member of wealth building webinars. It's $49 a month and you get all the webinars that we've done over the last couple of years. So um, now she, she did already put in the link to register for tomorrow night's webinar, but Nicole, you could go ahead and put that in there again and also put in the link for them to find out more about wealth building webinars and to join wealth building webinars. Okay. And Gary's asking, are the liens in Indiana commissioner sale picked over or many good ones available? I don't know this year because this is the first year that so many of them are online. Uh, I've gone to I, Lake County um, a couple of years ago, but that was when it was live. And this year it's going to be online. So I don't know what it's going to be like yet. We're going to find out. But you can get the results of previous uh, tax sales, previous commissioner sales. As a matter of fact, this is what I do, what I teach my students to do, and is, is what um, I'm showing them how to do inside the Indiana course that we're doing, the Done With You training. It's called a done with you training because um, I, I do it while these sales are going on and show you how to register and do your due diligence and bid at the sale. Um, we had our first live call last week. We're gonna have our next one next week. There are still three more live calls and module, there's gonna be four modules. There's one module out there now and the next one will be posted on Monday or by Monday. I might even post it a little earlier than that. Um, and the first one covered how to, it covered what happens in Indiana, how these sales work, which uh, commissioner sales are coming up, which are online, how to register uh, for them. Um, and basically where to go to register for them and find out more how to get the rules of the sale and all that stuff and how to determine which are the better counties to uh, bid at. Next week, we're going to talk about how to find the, the right uh, properties to bid on. Okay, how to filter the list and research the properties. That's what we're going to talk about next week. And Nicole put both of those links in there for you. So do we have any other questions? Um, I think I answered all the questions that we had so far. And Gary, did I answer your question? Um, It's hard to give a definitive answer because things change every year, but you can get the results of the past tax sales and see how competitive they are. Yes, they are competitive, but here's the thing about Indiana. Um, you get a penalty on your total bid amount. So whatever you bid, you're gonna get interest on. It's actually a, a penalty amount. And then there's also some interest added in. Uh, I discuss it in depth in the course. Um, what else is I going to tell you about that? Uh, so the trick is in Indiana is figuring out what the value of the property is and making sure that you don't bid so much 
that um, because you're going to have to pay another year's taxes by the time you actually foreclose on the property. So you want to make sure that with everything that you pay and what you might have into it to rehab it, that you still make a profit. All right. So that's that's the trick is determining how much you can bid in Indiana and make a profit. And um, I do have on my blog, if you go to taxinginvestingtips.com um, and Nicole can put a link into the actual blog post. I have an interview that I did with Ollie Thomas. Ollie is in the course this year and he uh, I, he was my client when I went in 2019 to the Lake County sale, commissioner sale, and helped him buy three liens, two of them redeemed, and one of them he got the property, and uh, he foreclosed on the property, fixed it up, and now it is rented out. And he gives the numbers and um, you know what his profit was. He is now renting out the property, he's doing it for cash flow. And uh, he wound up getting a very good deal on that property. So you might want to go watch that interview that I did with him. Uh, it's on my blog at taxinginvestingtips.com. And Nicole, you could put that link in there. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. That, so let me give you guys another minute. Uh, last call. <laughs> last call for questions. Okay, Tom, any upcoming tax lien, tax deed sales that you would recommend? Yeah, the Indiana sales. Um, Indiana, I like the Indiana commissioner sales for two reasons. Real short redemption period. Um, four months. And the starting bid gets lowered in some counties as low as $25. And anywhere I've seen them anywhere, each county gets to set their own minimum bid in the commissioner sale. I've seen them anywhere from $25 to $500 in Lake County. It's $500. Okay. All right. And Nicole put that link in for you to, for that interview that I did with Ollie. And, um, And she had, she's got a few links in the comments. So if you are interested in that Indiana course, just look through the comments and she's put that link in there as well. So if there are no other questions, and by the way, there's always tax sales in New Jersey. So Tom, you're in New Jersey, right? Um, I usually check on tax sale finders to see what's coming up in New Jersey. All their online sales are on realauction.com, but I don't do the online sales in New Jersey for two reasons. One, super competitive. Two, you need $10,000 for each sale because you have to put a $1,000 minimum deposit and they take that as 10% of your budget. And, and so every sale that you register for that's online in New Jersey, you need to set aside $10,000 for. So that's why I don't do the online sales in New Jersey. One of the reasons I would look for what live sales are coming up. And I use tax sale finders to, to find that out. And again, my students and my members, if you guys are interested in membership and becoming a member, you get access to tax sale finders along with a coaching session, I do a group coaching session for members. And you also get the wealth building webinars um, and some of my courses. So it's really worth it to become a member. If you're interested in finding out more about membership, you could go to taxleanlady.com forward slash membership to find out more about that. Um, and Nicole can put that link in there for you too. Uh, and again, last call for any questions. Um, let's see, I'm just looking to make sure I didn't miss any of your questions. 
and um, tax deed sales. Are there any upcoming tax deed sales that I recommend? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know. I usually check tax sale finders to see what's coming up. Um, with tax deed sales, but uh, there will be tax sales coming up in PA, deed sales coming up in PA. Um, yeah, off the top of my head, I don't, I don't know. I'd have to check uh, tax sale finders. All right, and Nicole just put that link in there for the membership. If you guys want to find out more about that, by the way, I do, I do that group coaching call every month for members. It will be happening next week. It's at the same time as this. It's only it's on a Wednesday. It's at two o'clock on the third Wednesday of the month, usually. And we always go over what tax sales are coming up and which ones are the better ones to invest in. And I sometimes do a mini training on um, on one of those you know tax sales that are coming up. For instance, last month I did one on the Indiana Commissioner sales. So I'm not sure what I'll be doing next month yet. And I also do coaching for anybody that needs help with anything. All right, so if those are all the questions that we have today, um, I will see you guys uh, next uh, on the next Facebook Live. We'll be doing one next week. Um, and which online auction tax sale websites are more popular? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. <laughs> it's, uh, it depends on what kind of tax sale, what there's, there's different ones. Um, I already mentioned real auction. That's where a lot of the liens for the tax lien sales. It's where a lot of the tax lien sales that are online are. Um, bid for assets do some of the deed sales, but uh, there are others. It just depends on, on what you're looking for. Um, you know, which is the best uh, one for you and which state there are different ones for different states also. Uh, for instance, the Indiana, all the Indiana sales are on a different, uh, different platform. They're not on either of those. Um, Okay, so uh, as I was saying, we're going to do this again next week. I'll be here next week. But in the future, uh, I was doing like the first three Tuesdays in here, uh, Facebook Live in here. But I think we're going to limit it to the first and third Tuesday. Um, and we also have uh, next week, we have at 2 p.m. on Thursday, a, a mini training in the Investing for Success group. So if anybody is interested in joining the Investing for Success group, you could join that. It's a private Facebook group. It's free to join. All you have to do is answer the questions and we'll let you in just to make sure that you are interested in tax lien investing. And uh, you just have to agree to our terms and we'll let you join. And we do a Facebook Live in there as well, where I do a little mini training on overcoming challenges, overcoming your challenges to buying tax liens and tax deeds. And for you new people that really need to educate yourself, I really suggest that you join the Tax Lien Profits Accelerator um, because it, even the wealth building, one, one thing I didn't mention, when you join Wealth Building Webinars for only $49 a month, it includes my Tax Lien Investing Basics course. And that gives you a really good understanding of the difference between tax liens, tax deeds, which states do what. Um, and, and then uh, if you choose to join the Tax Lien Profits Accelerator, you get access to tools like tax sale finders, but you also get the Tax Lean Investing Basics course, plus all the workshops that I do, which is a lot of training. Um, all right, so I hope this has been helpful to you and I look forward to seeing you again next week. 
And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow night on the webinar that we're doing with uh, Carl Fisher of Cama Plan on investing in uh, tax liens and real estate with your self-directed IRA. Um, and what else do we have coming up? I think that's it. We've got the webinar tomorrow night. We've got, um, we don't have another uh, Facebook Live this Thursday, but we do have one next Tuesday and next it here, next Tuesday here at two o'clock and next Thursday in the Investing for Success group. So we've got a lot coming up. Plus uh, we've got our next week, we've got our next group coaching call for the Tax Lean Profits Accelerator. And we've got um, next week, our next training for the Indiana Commissioner Sales Training. Um, all right, everybody, thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you again and answering your questions about investing in uh, tax liens and tax deeds. Bye.